you asked, so we're delivering. We already have a number of videos on the Paid Media Pros channel about utilizing competitors and their insights for search, YouTube, and social strategies. And today we want to extend that library. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use competitors and insights about those competitors to maximize campaign performance in your display campaigns. I'll start off this video by saying that admittedly, display is likely going to be the least impressive of the competitor insights series of videos that we've done, but that doesn't mean that there aren't still some insights that you can glean and ways that you can improve your campaigns by getting a little bit more information from your competitors. I'm going to focus mostly on the Google Display Network because I think it's the one that gets used the most often. And I also think it's the one that has the best insights available for competitor targeting. So within our placeholder account, I'm going to navigate to the Audience Manager. I'm just going to be up here under Tools and Settings. And then head to Audience Manager in the Shared Library. Now the audiences that are available here are going to be based on your data segments, as you can see up here, which means that they are retargeting based on website visitors, YouTube engagement, a custom audience list. But the insights that we can find from competitors are actually going to be part of a custom segment audience. So I'm going to come up here to this portion, and now you can see some of the custom segments we already have in the account. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to create a completely new one and show you how to find those insights on your competitors. So to create a new one, just come over to the blue plus button, and now you'll see that we have an entire new custom segment available. I'm going to give it a name just so it won't throw any errors. Okay, now we can get started. The first way that we can use competitor insights against them for targeting options or being able to create a target audience is simply to add their brand name or their product names as interests and intentions within this first bracket here. This is going to be a section where you can effectively add keywords and the toggle up at the top is defaulted to people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. And the second option down below is the one that will seem more appealing. It says people who searched for any of these terms on Google. But the problem is for the Google Display Network, this option won't work. The tiny gray text down below says only campaigns running on Google properties. On other campaigns, terms will be used as interests and purchase intentions, effectively like running as keywords. Now the reason this is important for this video is because the Google Display Network is effectively entirely off of Google. There might be some placements that are on some Google properties, but the vast majority of placements around the GDN are going to be on other websites owned by individual users. Even the Paid Media Pros website has Google Display Network ads running it, and we certainly are not part of a Google-owned property. If you plan to potentially use this audience for a YouTube campaign or something else, you can end up switching the switch here, but it probably makes sense for this video just to leave it as the default option. I'm going to choose a brand for the sake of this video that I know has data available for each of the different types of options that I'm going to show you, and that's going to be Starbucks because it's a big enough name, people are pretty familiar with it, so you can follow along easily. So for this section here, we would want to start targeting individual keywords that could be about Starbucks. So let's type in a few of those terms. So by adding these keywords, I've told Google that I'm trying to find users who are interested in or might have purchase intentions for Starbucks, Starbucks iced coffee, Starbucks cold brew, Frappuccino, cinnamon dolce latte, lots of different options to try and target my specific audience that I'm trying to reach out to. So the first way to leverage your competitors is to use their brand name and product names to create a custom segment and target people who might be interested in them or have purchase intentions for those specific keywords or phrases. Before I move on to the next option, I'm going to clear this out. And now we're going to start on the second option. And to do that, I'm going to skip the websites option. We'll come back to that in a second. But we're going to use the people who use types of apps option. So the definition behind this is going to be finding people who use certain types of apps. So you can enter the names of apps that you think your ideal customers might use. And then by creating a custom segment on those, your ads will reach people who download and use apps that are similar to the one that you are interested in. This does not mean that your ad will show on those apps. So this is going to be another type of affinity target behind certain types of apps in the same way that we talked about the interests in certain types of keywords up above. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to use Starbucks here. Obviously, Starbucks has an app. They actually have a handful of them, depending on which location around the world. So I'll just choose this one by default. Now, by adding this, we are again trying to target people who have the same type of affinity for certain apps and might use an app similar to Starbucks. 
pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and ditch this one. Now the last option in this custom segment builder that I wanna talk about is going to be the types of websites. So let's open this one up. And here we can add in the Starbucks website to target people who browse websites that are similar to the Starbucks website. And I save this one for last because this has a little bit of a blend of the first strategy, which is around targeting interests and purchase intentions through different keywords of your competitors' names or their products, as well as utilizing apps and websites based on whichever properties your competitors own to try and get in front of the right types of people. So websites are gonna be the last option for this, and that's for the starbucks.com piece. And no matter what you end up adding, whether it's the intentions, the websites, or apps, once you save your custom segment, you'll be able to target those people on the Google Display Network and actively get in front of them. Now, as I mentioned, I saved websites for last for a reason, because in addition to creating a custom segment based on the interests around a specific website, you'll notice that off to the right, when I added starbucks.com, that there are a number of other insights available about people who visit this website. So it's not a perfect match because it's trying to find people who browse websites similar to starbucks.com, but you can see here that the gender breakdown is about 60% female. The age range is going to be majority actually 65 plus. It's got 27% there. And then 74% are non-parents. So that means only 26% are parents. Now again, this might not be the actual accurate representation of the average Starbucks user as a persona, but here's the thing, that doesn't matter as much as what Google thinks the average persona is, because if you're using Google to target that person, you want to go on what Google thinks that person is. So if it thinks that the average person who visits the Starbucks site is a 67 year old non-parent woman, then that's probably the right person to target. And that's probably the right demographics to target because that's what it thinks about the website. Additionally, there's a section down here below around specific topics. Utilizing the custom segment builder for the website section specifically, in my experience, will give you some examples of different topics that you can target in display campaigns as well. You could target coffee, coffee and tea, restaurant or food and drink topic on the Google Display Network to find people who have visited websites that are similar to starbucks.com or people who also might be interested. So effectively, this little section off to the right is providing you a user persona of how to target somebody demographics and topics wise on the Google Display Network based on what Google thinks about any given competitor. I personally think this section is pretty cool because as you're building your custom segment, you're also getting ideas for other ways to target people on the Google Display Network. That sums up the ways that we can target people with audiences based on their interests, the website or apps, or how we can find new targeting options based on the websites that people have visited. The last thing I wanna do is show you a tool that could give you insights into the ad creative that your competitors are using. If you visit moat.com, M-O-A-T.com, you'll be presented with a homepage that looks like this for the time being. My guess is every once in a while it'll change, but this is what it looks like as of March of 2022. I have absolutely no affiliation with the paid product of Moat at all. I've never used it. I personally don't even know anybody who has used it, but they were bought by Oracle, so there obviously is some value to it. So if you're interested, you can get a demo. But what I'm gonna talk about today instead is this Moat ad search tool down here. So if you come in here, you can see that it prompts you to search by brand, and you guessed it, I'm gonna search for Starbucks. You can see here that the option has a nice long list of different things available. So Starbucks is a brand, Frappuccino, Double Shot, K-Cups, all different sorts of brand segmentations. So let's just start with Starbucks itself. I'm gonna go ahead and ditch this banner. And now we can see there are a ton of different ads already populated from Starbucks. You can see that there's all different sorts of sizes, different dimensions, different offers. And as you hover over each of them, you can see the device, the dimensions, and the dates that it has been active. So there's a lot of different ways that you can find insights into your competitors' ads or finding inspiration for ads to run for yourself from other brands that may or may not be competitors, but you can at least get some ideas of how to run things. Now you will notice that all of the different ads that are in here are going to be ads that have been custom built by Starbucks and they are not going to be any sort of responsive display ads that Google will show with the text and all that sort of thing. These are simply just the banner ads that Starbucks has put together. 
But remember, we did see a number of other breakdowns up here. So let's go back up to the search by brand section, type in Starbucks, and just take a look at one of the other brands we have here. Let's just do Frappuccino for fun. Now the ad creatives have been narrowed down to only things that are about Starbucks Frappuccino. These look quite a bit different than just the regular overall brand of Starbucks. So it's interesting to see how they treat the different brands differently and how the creative differs depending on which product they're trying to go after. So again, lots of inspiration that you can gather from here just to see different ways that you can represent different products that you have. As I said in the beginning, display might be the least impressive of these competitor insights videos that we've done, but I do think it's still worth your while to spend a decent amount of time testing different variables within a custom segment in the Google Ads Builder, whether you're actually trying to create a target audience, or if you're just trying to gain persona insights from the users who visit your competitors' websites to find new targeting options around demographics and topics for a standard display campaign. And although Moat has a lot of different brands available on the platform, depending on how large your competitors are, you might not be able to find creatives that are going to be directly comparable to you. But in that scenario, all you need to do is start to find a slightly larger brand that might have a little bit of additional reach beyond where you are, or somebody who's in a similar industry, but might not be a direct competitor just to get inspiration about your ads. Can't tell you how many times I've had design teams ask me what we need our display ads to look like. And I've been able to use Moat to give them a lot of examples to show what different brands are doing and start to get their creative juices flowing so they can figure out what to put together. Hopefully this has given you some ideas about how you can use your competitors in display campaigns. But just like always, if you have any other questions for us about this topic or any other, to be honest, we would love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you wanna get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.